بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Dear respected viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to another brand new episode of In the Shades of the Quran airing every fortnightly on your very favorite TV station channel Sky 814 I'm your host, Qamar al-Islam, looking forward to having you all join us on this blessed day of Jum'ah. One of the fundamental aspects of Islam is the special emphasis on knowledge. And reading forms one of the basic element of acquiring knowledge. Hence the first, word, the first verse which was revealed in the glorious Qur'an is, as we know from Surah Al-Alaq, verse number one, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, read in the name of your Lord who created you. On the other hand, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has encouraged us to read the Qur'an as often and as much as possible. In a hadith we know that a person when he reads the Qur'an he will be receiving the reward for each and every letter he or she recites. مَنْ أَقْرَأَ حَرْفًا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ فَلَهُ حَسَنًا So what are these rewards? How many type of rewards are there? What is the benefit of these rewards? And are these rewards restricted to only this dunya? or the Akhirah, or both. To risk all of these fall under our today's topic for discussion, Al-Qur'an, Tilawa, and Virtue. To discuss this topic, we have with us a very distinguished guest. He is the principal, is the founding principal of Al-Qur'an Institute, London, and the respected khatib of the Darul Ummah, Jami Masjid, Fadirat al-Shaykh al-Muhtaram Hafid Shafiq al-Rahman al-Madani. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, fine. Thank Allah. you very much for being here. Well, it's studio. my pleasure. Thank you very much, and thanks to all the viewers of the channel as well. Exactly. Mm. As I've said in my introduction, our, top, our topic for today's discussion is Al-Quran, Tilawa and Virtue. Yeah. Now, the first thing which comes to my mind is, as Muslims, do we need to set a goal? Do we need to have an objective before reading the Quran? What I mean is, is there a purpose that we have to keep in mind that we read the Qur'an for the purpose of benefit or for the rewards or is there any greater meaning behind this reading the Qur'an? Jazakallah, thank you for asking this question. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahir rahman ar-rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wal-aqibatu lil-muttaqeen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulihi muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Amma ba'du fa'audhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Al-lazina ataynahum al-kitab yatlunahu haqqa tilawatih Sadaqallahu al-azim Dear and respected viewers, brothers and sisters of Channel S I hope you are all well, alhamdulillah Wherever you are watching this program, Paul, we, we pray that you remain with, uh, with, with, uh, with us, inshallah, uh, watching this program, and you may well remain good, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Welcome to all of you to this program after the uh, blessed week of Hajj and Eid, uh, inshallah. I hope that we had, and we all had, a good and memorable and, 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 and pleasant Eid, inshallah. And by now, Obviously, our loved one, our dear ones who were on the pilgrimage journey on Hajj, Alhamdulillah, they have started coming back to us. Uh, hopefully, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the blessings of Hajj and with being forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And inshallah, we are pleased to have them back. Inshallah, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them tawfiq to remain steadfast and <coughs> all of us to remain steadfast on the day on, on his deen and on the on the on living by the Quran, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this question about the tilawa or the reading of the Quran, whether we need to have a purpose or not. Well, clearly uh, we need this is, the, this, is the, this is the most basic to the Qur'an and the tilawa and reading of the Qur'an. Qur'an, as we know, is the kalam Allah. Indeed. It's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the supreme authority, is the supreme being, you know, as a creator, among all the creators, among all the creations and creatures, so is his word, his word and his kalam is the supreme kalam, is the most honorable 
and the uh, most sacred of all kalams, all uh, words, and all messages. And therefore, when we read this Quran, we need to have a purpose. It cannot be purposeless. Anything we read in this country, in, in this life, even when we read a, a novel, for example, which is a fiction, mm. we have a purpose. At least, you know, what is called pleasing ourselves, recreation, you know. We, 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 we read a novel just to recreate, recreate ourselves, you know, to give us a bit of, uh, a bit of, give ourselves, allow our, ourselves a bit of space, you know, away from the hustles and bustle and stress. And so that. there is a purpose. Mm -hmm. What about <coughs> the, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best of all books, the best of all kalams and the best of all words? We must have a purpose. And what is the purpose? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah that I read, الَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ Those who I, we gave them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I gave them the book, they recite the book as it should be recited. And another tarjama, another uh, translation of this verse is that they follow talayatlu. The word talayatlu has two meanings in Arabic. One is tilawa, which is recitation. And the other is tilawa, which is following, close behind. So this ayah, this verse, can be translated in both ways. That they recite the Quran in the way it should be recited. What does it mean? With the respect, with the veneration, with the intention of getting reward. Yes, that's, that's how it should be recited. And also, it can be translated into, and they follow this book as it should be followed. Follow in what sense? In the in sense of action, amal. Practical implementation. Practical, you know, practice. Mm -hmm. So what they read by the, what they read by their lips, by their mouth, by their words, they then translate this into action. That is how they follow it. They practice it. So the Quran has two purposes. One is reading of the Quran has two purposes. One is to read for the sake of reward and reward is sawab and sawab is obviously when we uh, generally when we speak of sawab we speak sawab or the reward that we will get in the akhirah inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is according to hadith you have already mentioned this hadith that each and every letter read of the quran it attracts 10 rewards it gives us 10 rewards right. 10 10 false rewards and the second purpose is obviously is to understand the Quran, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying there. What is the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conveyed to us in his own words? And then acting upon those teachings, practicing uh, and living by the Quran. So these are the two purposes of the Quran and the reading and the revelation of the Quran. Okay, that's correct. Um, when we say the purpose, now yeah. one of the important issues is obviously the tartil we have discussed in our previous episode, yeah. reading it correctly. Yeah. Now I will quote two verses that I've come across that in Surah Fatir when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna alladheena yatruuna kitab Allahi wa aqama salah and then in uh, Surah Ankabut, I think the first verse of uh, the 21st Jews, Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al kitabi wa aqim is salah. Now, in both the verses, Allah talks about reading the Quran first mm. and then establishing the prayer. Mm. What is the connection between reading the Quran? F because if you see the order, Allah mentions in both the verses, the order is first reading the Quran and then establishing the salah. So, mm. what is the hikmah behind these verses? Well, clearly, the hikmah is that Quran is the message. It is the Quran that actually tells us who is who. <clears throat> Through Quran, we get the message that we get the existence of Allah, the Tawheed, the Tawheed, the oneness of Allah, the prophets, the prophets, the prophethood of the prophets, alayhi salatu salam, and salah and so on. and. The fact that there is one being called Allah, and He is one, mm -hmm. and He is the one who is the supreme master, supreme lord of this whole one, whole, whole universe, and He is the one who sends His messages 
through his angels, through peop to people who he, he is chosen as prophets or as messengers. All these informations, all these beliefs, where, get we, where, where, where do we get from? Where, where do we get them from? It's from the Quran itself, isn't yes. it? So naturally, the Quran comes first. Quran comes first. So, the Quran comes first. You read the Quran first. You read the Quran first and you get the message, understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to say there, what the message he is conveying there. And then, and then proclaim it to other people. You know, read it to other people. Have other people listen to it and accept the message. So, yes, yes. Now, does it not mean that in order for our salah to be perfect, our reading should be perfect? Of course. Uh, one verse, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the wording Quran, you know, it has many, many, many shades of meanings. Yes. Oh, I see. Min al -kitabi <coughs> wa is salah. Yes, it can also mean, it can also mean that. When the uh, order of yeah, arrangement, yeah, I yes, mean, does it, yes. sig does it not signify that yeah. reading the Quran and reading it correctly yes. stands, it's very important. Very important, yes. And yes. if one can do good and in, can recite perfectly, yeah. then his salah will also well, course, be having course, a higher reward. Of course, of course, of course. Of course. Okay, uh, now moving into my second question would be, the Quran says itself it's a shifa. Yeah. The other name for the Quran is a shifa. Now, why has Allah chosen a shifa cure for Quran? The other name for this Quran. Well, the Quran has many other names. Among, out of various among names. out of the out of the many names, one uh, one of the important names. and very renowned, very common name given to the Quran itself is shifa. And shifa, the word shifa means cure. Now, cure in what sense? Mainly and primarily, cure and shifa here is spiritual, in the spiritual sense. Mm -hmm. You know, people, uh, human being is made up of two things, two elements. One is the inner being, the soul, the atta, that is called we, we in Bengali, the roar, or the spirit. And the other is our body. So, mind and body, mind and body. When we say mind, broadly, we mean all the inner, you know, dimensions or inner mm. things or inner elements of our being, which is, you know, our intellect, our spirit, our emotions and all the other things. So, mind. The Quran is, in the first place, is a cure, is a shifa for our mind. Our mind had good and bad thoughts. We know. Mm -hmm. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaaha wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha anta waliyuha wa mawlaha. So in Surah al-Shamsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa sawaha. A human soul, human, in a, you know, human, human soul has been, uh, has been given two Two, 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 two things. One is the good desire and the other is the bad desire. So bad desire is in a way is a disease for our spiritual disease. And Quran comes actually to clean our heart, our soul of the bad desires, of the blood propensities and the disease and, and maladies. So that's why the Quran is Shifa. Um, Jazakallah, Sheikh. Well, I'll continue the discussion, but it's time for a short commercial break now. Yeah. Um, dear viewers, we have been listening about the objective of reading the Quran and as Sheikh recently mentioned about the cure. When we come back, it's time for a short commercial break. When we come back, we hope to continue our discussion. So do stay tuned with us. We'll be back in a, in a few moments. Assalamu alaikum.